Um, Mr. Greenstein, you mentioned in your testimony that we had in the Farm Bill an employment and training um, pilot program combined with with um, our supplemental nutrition assistance program that we call SNAP Employment and Training. This is a pilot that I introduced based on some work that we've done in Washington State on basic food employment and training that has been a, a very successful program in our state. In one study, less than half of the participants remained on government assistance two years after starting the program. Um, we had 60% of those enrolled in the program were able to find employment afterwards. And I think if we're talking about helping people get back on their feet, um, this is a, a key goal. Um, can, I, I wonder if you can talk a little bit more about how programs like this might be able to help save money in the long run by helping people get back to self-sufficiency and also make sure that um, those enrolled in nutrition programs are given opportunities as well to get back into the workforce or to seek other job opportunities that help them to take care of themselves and their families. I think these demonstration projects are quite important. Um, We've had mixed records over the years in terms of other kinds of employment-related programs. Um, I, I, I think as one of your colleagues noted, uh, I, I think Congresswoman Fudge, that uh, too often training programs out across the country, not SNAP ones, but others, have focused on the people who already had the most job experience and the most skills and were the easiest to place. Often they were people who would have found jobs on their own anyway, even without a training program, but the training program then got to check the box that someone went through their program and got into a slot. And what we really need to do better about is providing the skills for the people who have the least skills and the least education to enable them to get in and stay in the labor market. And a lot of the people who are on SNAP who are unemployed fall into that category. It's not as though we know, here are the two or three cookie cutter things to do. So the purpose of these demonstration projects is to test a wide variety of proposals. And my understanding is states have submitted a yeah, in fact, we, we had the Secretary of Agriculture here, and he said that the beginning of March we would be hearing on some of the, on, on what their decision was. With yes, the, my understanding the is they're about to announce very shortly uh, the pilots. Mm -hmm. And I had one conversation with Secretary Vilsack a month or two ago in which I said that my recommendation was pick an array of projects, mm -hmm. pick some from very conservative states, not as conservative, do a, a range so we can learn, test a variety of things. And he said back to me that that was exactly what he planned to do. No, that's great. Um, I want to get back to uh, an issue we've been talking about, a few folks has, have brought up, and I know the center wrote a recent paper highlighting that one million people will be coming off of SNAP by the end of 2016, due to fewer states being eligible for waivers and more individuals being subject to the time limit. Um, you know, Congress passed a provision that requires those who can work to find a job or enroll in a state training program or workforce program in order to receive more than three months of SNAP benefits. Um, unfortunately, Congress didn't require the states to offer an opportunity, as we've talked about, to participate in a job training or, or, work share pro or workforce program. Um, Washington State is eligible for and is currently using the statewide waiver for fiscal year 2015. Um, I'm an original co-sponsor of a piece of legislation called the SNAP Work Opportunity Act, and it was introduced um, this week. Um, this bill would help prevent those 1 million Americans from losing eligibility by only letting the work requirement apply to those actually offered a job training or work fair opportunity. And I wanted to know what you think of a piece of legislation like that in terms of helping us address this issue and making sure that um, we really focus on our goal, which is helping people get back in the workforce. I, I, uh, I, I think a, a legislation like that or of its ilk is extremely important uh, because it does reflect the nature of the caseload now. But I want to emphasize what I've said before because the states were ready before the, um, the SNAP pilots. They were ready to accept uh, the requirement to do things if they got financial benefit. But I, I want to let Mr. Um, Greenstein also respond just well, because I want to be Well, the lady's time expired, and, and uh, 
to be respectful for the other members, uh, there will be a second Thank round you. if you want to do that. So. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Crawford for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. Gentlemen, I appreciate it.